All right, this is a little overwhelming. Okay. I'm opening up the case of tissues. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for being here with us tonight for this very, very special occasion. A special thank you to our family, our children and our siblings who flew in from Israel. And thank you to the shul for making that surprise possible in a myriad of ways. Thank our family that drove in from Muncie. Sometimes that's a bigger challenge than flying in from Israel. And to all our cousins and friends from every era of our life who made the effort to be here tonight. You know, especially after this amazing, amazing Shabbos, it's much more difficult than I ever anticipated to stand here and address everyone after a lifetime of experiences of raising children, laughing, crying, learning, growing, and building together. I'm sure I'm going to leave things out, and I hope you will come and remind me and share the memories I forgot, and please forgive me in advance. It was only a few minutes ago that I met our entire shul at Joey Jenikowski's bar mitzvah party at Great Neck Synagogue a few days after getting engaged. I felt I knew everyone already. Our courtship was filled with stories of shul meetings, and for those of you who are here who still remember him, Julie Seiden's jokes, David Eilenberg is here with Missy, and David is Julie's grandson. Yaakov had already brought me to meet his great aunt parents, Louie and Edith Lang. So Yaakov, I said, how do you want me to refer to you in front of everyone at the bar mitzvah? What do you mean, he said, Yaakov, that's my name. <laughs> Next week, that moment will be 43 years and four months ago. Yesterday, but long ago. 43 years ago, there was no black kosher, kosher butcher in town. Edith Lang was still picking up challah for everyone at G&I in Queens and still carpooling to MTA in a red station wagon. Great Neck had two movie theaters. Empire was just beginning to sell packaged raw poultry in the supermarket. How many kashrut symbols did it need? That was our question. And those very supermarkets were still closed on Sunday. If you wanted pizza or meat, you went to Queens to Bronx. You never ever went to Main Street without seeing at least one person from Great Neck, but most of the time you saw many more. 43 years ago, folks, you called someone on Tuesday or Wednesday for lunch that very Shabbos, not a month in advance. <laughs> 43 years ago, there was no Erev, and again, we will thank Larry Schiffman and Donnie from all of us, you put us on the map. And in our community, it is very important to state that 43 years ago, the Shah of Iran was still in power. <laughs> Great Neck is where we became parents. Most of us women, though not all, were home in those days and we learned from one another. We shared our parenting concerns about how to become more relaxed, better listeners, what to ignore, ice skating lessons, and quitting ice skating lessons. There were people, there are people in the room tonight who I recall were struggling with patience when our kids were little, who ultimately became role models for me of calm and reason. There were those who didn't pick up the phone during dinner until after the kids were in bed and gave the children their full attention during those hours. I so admired that. I didn't do it, but I admired that. <laughs> I remember learning from someone that I'd better run out to shop when my fever from strep just began before I wouldn't be able to move anymore. We were there for each other in the best of times and in the very worst of times. Some important things emerged from those difficult times. As Yaakov mentioned yesterday, Chesed Mordechai changed our shul when the amazing Sue Talansky, along with very sensitive, creative individuals, realized after Frankie Ehrenberg's sudden death that a Shiva family could use real organized help. 
I will always treasure my relation, my friendship with Gail Palkoff, Sahana Lavraha, for modeling grace and humor under the worst conditions with the Malcha mothers hovering over her. You will be with me always, Gail. And my loving kisses to Ellen Tibadalachai for always being there for me and for all of us. And we have all experienced wonderful, beautiful, unbelievable miracles here together. And during all this, we were meeting and building the shul, the schools, the mikvah, Amit. A few weeks ago, Jorah Cassell was unfortunately sitting shiva for her sister Geula. I went over with Yaakov and then two women walked in. And Jorah and Yaakov and I and these two women looked at each other. All our oldest children were classmates and are now, Baruch Hashem, wonderful adults in their forties. We have lived here together for a lifetime. Thank you, everyone, for treating our kids like your own, for letting them grow up in your homes, for making no exceptions and just relating to them like regular kids. Do you want to know why they did okay? It's because of every single one of you and because of our children's wonderful friends in our community who created a safe haven for them of friendship and of love and of growth and understanding. Yaakov used to dream that the children of the shul would move back one day, and for a long time, we did not think that would happen. But sitting here as active members of our shul and members of our community, as our peers now, as our colleagues, are not only so many who grew up here, but so many actual classmates of each of our daughters. Our children learned from all of you, their friends, about sacrifice and tolerance and humor and gratitude. And they learned keep it the aim when they saw the respect with which your parents treated their parents and the respect with which all of you treated our parents. All the adults in our community are known to the children by their first names. What an adjustment for our kids in the summer when all the adults in the bungalow are known to the children by their last names. Over the last year or so, we have all become very nostalgic about our retirement from the shul and our upcoming aliyah. Some people have said, even yesterday, this crazy thing, Look what you've built. Nothing, nothing could be further from the truth. Shlomo HaMelech tells us in Mishlei, Kamayim hapanim lapanim kenev ha'adama adam. As water reflects a face back to a face, so one's heart is reflected back to him by another. We came here as kids in our 20s. We had, thank God, beautiful upbringings, great parents, siblings, and communities that raised us, and rabbis, and teachers, and rebellion that served as our role models. But trust me, folks, we did not know what we were doing. <laughs> but we were surrounded by extraordinary, idealistic people here. All we did was reflect back what we saw in everyone's face here. And Edith Lang, who hosted people for meals and for sleeping in her tiny two-bedroom apartment. There were four boys in that apartment in addition to Edith and Louie, and yet every guest in show seemed to be sleeping at the last. Jay and Michael Lang are here, and you know, I never asked you, where did you guys sleep on those Shabbos? And can you imagine, when we were still living at 24 mil per court, I once got yelled at by Edith for giving our bedroom to a bowl of his wife, who were here for Yom Tov. Don't you ever do that again. You send them to me. <laughs> Bill Kufeld, who not only greeted every new person, but found out all about them and took a real interest in them week after week. Morris Lewinter, himself part of the kinder transport, who loved every child like his own and knew what everyone was up to until his dying day. We looked at everyone's face and saw generosity and care and humility. Successful professionals who took home the garbage every Moti Shabbos when the shul had no trash pickup. People who climbed on ladders and put the acoustic tile in the sanctuary, now the Kiddush room. Women who set up Kiddush every week after shopping for Kiddush all week. As young couples slowly began moving into the neighborhood, we all learned together how to run activities, relay races and scavenger hunts and Purim costume contests. 
We young couples were the youth directors, practicing holiday plays at our homes to be presented in shul, taking turns reading stories to the kids on Yom Kippur. Many of the things that are institutions now, like the Yom HaShoah commemoration, were started then. Sue, how can we thank you enough for the safe and Zikaron that will be an everlasting monument to the Holocaust victims and survivors of our own Shul family. And as our community grew, there were other things to learn. Project identity and people had questions about observance who wanted more of their lives had questions for us. In addition to project identity, there was a whole other internal Kirov operation going on here. And we had to become more educated, better role models to reflect back the curiosity about religion, the pure idealism of those who changed their lives in mid course. And we developed a sense of humor from some of the funniest people sitting here who told us that maybe Great Neck could go to Lakewood and be the weed program and teach the yeshiva guys there to play tennis and bottle, waste time, instead of them sending us the seed program each summer to increase our study in Great Neck. Does anyone remember the Hebrew Kadisha of Ridley Field, a great moment spoken about once in Chastorah after an ardent Chicago Cubs fan had their ashes sprinkled all over the ball field? Concept that someone floated that membership in the young tool of Great Neck is like paying an insurance premium with dozens of doctors taking care of every single generation in our families. <laughs> Certain presidents who left us roaring in laughter with every week Shabbos announcements. We learned by reflecting back the smiles, the enthusiasm, the sacrifice of those who make up our community. We have learned from those of every age who were beaten down by a variety of personal crises and got back up again, we're not sure how. We have learned from those who give their time to volunteer to individuals and to important causes. We will miss so much of what makes this community great, the diversity and the unity, ever fresh. A supermarket, but really a support group, a social center, and a 3 quarter and 30 p.m. mincha magically transformed into the Young Israel of Everfresh, the Everfresh Synagogue, Share Everfresh, led by Rev Martin. And we know that that's not her real name, Martin, but we'll just pretend. <laughs> we will miss the coziness of our small but cosmopolitan town, the beautiful parts, Stepping Stone, <laughs> where we hung out as a young couple, brought our children, where our daughters brought their chassanim, and now we bring our grandchildren. We promise to maintain the close personal friendships that will define our lives and our children's lives forever. As Susan Lerner, who is here tonight from Israel, that many years ago when she made Aliyah from Great Neck. If I were moving to California, I'd have to say goodbye. But I'm moving to Israel, so I know I'll see most of you probably once a year. I knew it was a mistake to let my wife go first. <laughs> You know, if you live long enough, you get to see a lot of fascinating things. When the first shul dinner was being planned, which was in early 1976, they had decided to choose one of the founding members, one that Abby referred to a great deal just moments ago, Edith and Louis Lang, who lived directly across the street from where we presently are. As you heard, they lived in a tiny bedroom, two bedrooms, four boys. They spoke about the fact that it would be a program, of course, that I would be honored to make the presentation to these people who are most in Efesh, for Torah, for Kal Yisrael. And then went on to talk about the rest of the evening and mentioned that at some point the band would switch from the regular Hebrew Nigunim, to other music. I said, what do you mean by other music? 
And they said, well, you know, the other kind of stuff that goes on at dinners, he said, but you know, that's not according to halacha. So they said to me, but Rabbi, that goes on all over. It's unheard of in Great Neck, in any institution, and in many other young Israels, that there not be some mixed dancing. You know what the rabbi does? The rabbi is usually discreet and leaves at an early hour. <laughs> I said to them, you know, you named the synagogue Shomri Hadat. By the time I arrived, it had gotten the charter to become the young Israel of Great Neck. But I don't think that what you're doing is correct. Maybe I'll be even more discreet and not show up. I don't know why he had the courage to do it. I wasn't being paid too much. I wasn't married. I didn't have too many responsibilities. So I figured, go for it. I went for it. And to their credit, Bill Kufel, Morris Lewinter, Louis Lang, all decided to give it a try. It was the first time in the history of Great Neck that there was a halachically correct major dinner on behalf of an institution. We never look back. But you know, you know what? Harish Baruch works all kinds of miracles. Who could have imagined that 45 years later, we would be coming back to a dinner not far from where I grew up in Pelham Parkway in the Bronx, and that the entire dinner would be showman and Gio. Not only men not touching women and not dancing with women, but men not even touching men. Kodesh Kadoshim. Extraordinary miracle before our eyes. I want to talk to you about another miracle of my life, and I really believe from the depth of my heart that it was a miracle. I want to give you a little bit of the history of my coming out and becoming the rabbi of the young Israel of Great Neck. It was a very, very fascinating situation because I had gotten Samicha the year before and now I was teaching part-time at Lincoln Square Synagogue but my real goal was to try to go into Chinuch. I never intended to be a pulpit rabbi. Honestly, it never crossed my mind. I grew up in a shul where the rabbi was truly a Talmud Chacham, who had learned in one of the major yeshivas in Brooklyn. I knew he was a Talmud Chacham, because come Shabbos Shuva, during the Aseris Yimei Shuva, come Shabbos Haggadol, before Pesach, and he would give a brilliant shuva drosha or Shabbos Haggadol drosha that was filled with lumbus. But the rest of the year, the drushos that he spoke about were mostly current events, politics, spiced in with some stories and of course a little bit of Torah. And it was to my mind Torah light. Now mind you, I had a very close relationship with this rabbi. I used to tutor his children. At one point I said to him, Rebbe, why don't you try to like raise the bar? Why don't you give more Torah even in the regular weekly Shabbos drushas? His answer to me was, Yankala, which is what he called me, Yankala, if you ever go into the pulpit, you'll see that you have to address the people who are sitting in the last row of the shul. It was then that I pretty much realized that I wanted to go into Chinuch. <laughs> not Rabbanus, absolutely not Rabbanus. And I was lucky because the following year I ended up getting a position with Rabbi Riskin's new high school. But before that happened, because I was teaching at Lincoln Square Synagogue, it just so happened that at one point Rabbi Yefi Buchwald met me one night and said to me, would you want to tutor someone who's coming to Lincoln Square Synagogue? He's first becoming about Shuva. He wants to learn about basic Judaism. Would you willing to be take, take it on? 
So I said to him, well, if he's doing it, if he's willing and free to be available at the time that I'm coming anyway, when I'm teaching, then I'll agree to do it. And so it worked out. That person was Matthew Hirshhorn. Matthew Hirshhorn lived in Great Neck. We learned for an hour each week. He paid me very well for that hour. But I have to honestly tell you, we spent more than half of the time with him relating to me the politics of Great Neck. The established Orthodox Shul, the breakaway Orthodox Shul, all of the tension that's going on in the community, things that I wasn't really interested in. But he took an interest in me because he was really very, very kind. He was worried about my future. Come on, he would say to me. Yaakov, who's going to marry you? What Jewish girl is going to marry a guy who doesn't have a job? <laughs> so I said, Matthew, you're quite well off, I know. You're coming to Lincoln Square. You are probably contributing to Rabbi Riskin. Why don't you try to use your influence to try to get me a job in his Masifta High School in Riverdale? He tried. It didn't work out. A year or two later, it did work out both for me and my dear friend, Rabbi Heshi Village from Young Israel Woodmere. We were obeying there for a number of years together. At that point, I said to Matthew, well, how do you even know that they want to have a rabbi? There were only 18 families, some of whom were just the associate members. And so, how do you know they're interested? So he said, okay, I'll talk to Bill Kufeld and find out if he's interested. He spoke to Bill Kufeld. He relentlessly continually told me I have to consider it to be open to it. And probably because he knew, nudged Bill to death, <laughs> Bill finally said, okay, here's my number. Let him call me up. You realize what this is. This is a situation of a shidduch that was made in heaven. I did not want to be a pulpit rabbi. The young Israel really was not at all interested in having a pulpit rabbi. They were doing just great on their own. And along comes Matthew alias Elio Hanavi and totally, totally changes the entire direction of my life. They decided that if I was going to be coming out every week, they should rent a room for me. They rented a room by Yossi and Rina Weisberg. I was there for Shabbos. I was there for Yom and Tovim. And when I reflect on this story, it makes me think about a very moving Gemara that has always deeply impacted on me. It's the Gemara Nyevamos. Gemara Nyevamos talks about how the great, great Tana, the greatest of Tanai and Rabbi Akiva, was once out on a ship on the Mediterranean. He saw at a distance an adjacent ship, which he knew was carrying his prized Talmud, Rebbe Meir, Stam Mishnah, Rebbe Meir. Suddenly a fierce storm erupted. With horror, Rebbe Akiva observed as Rebbe Meir and all the other passengers were tossed into the water as they both capsized. Rebbe Akiva grieved deeply for the loss of his beloved Talmud. But then later, when his boat arrived at shore, Rabbi Akiva was shocked to find Rabbi Meir safe and sound there on the coastline. How did you get here? He asked Rabbi Akiva incredulously. What was Rabbi Meir's response? One wave came, swept me onto another wave, and that onto its fellow wave, until the sea spit me out onto dry land. What can I say? What's the Marshall Nimshaw in my life, and maybe I'm fantasizing, I feel that Matthew Hirshhorn was my wave. Karish Baruch sent him to me to bring me to Great Neck. This encounter literally changed the entire course of my life. And if many of you have heard the lives of our children were deeply impacted by living 
in this extraordinary community as they spoke about so beautifully and poignantly yesterday. So what's the take home lesson? To me, it's a very powerful lesson. Sometimes we all have to be humble. We have to be willing to roll with the punches. We have, to, we have to think that we're not so smart. We cannot figure it all out. That we don't always know what is best for us and best for our children. But in the end, we need to have a muna and be tough on. We need to bow our heads. We need to roll with the waves. The plans that Kodesh Baruch Hu has in store for us, clearly they are mysterious and oftentimes they are wonderful and they bring us to a completely different place than we could have imagined. Sadly, Matthew Hirschman passed away about four years ago. Abby and I found out, and we went to Far Rockaway to pay a shiver call to his wife and to his children to express our tremendous sadness at his passing and our incredible Hakara Sato, the deepest gratitude for what he had done for our family. I am very happy to welcome to this gathering Matthew's beloved wife, Dr. Deb Hershorn, who is with us today. Please stand up, Debbie. May his neshama have incredible merit in Shemayim for the impact it has had not only in his own family and his community, but the impact he had on me, Abby, our family, and hopefully our community. So let me tell you now some of the things that make greatness really, really great. Why is it such a special and precious community to us? Why is it that even as we are extraordinarily excited to move to Eretz Israel, to be in Admas Kodesh, to be with three of our children, so many grandchildren, and we have Hashem, Seth, and Jonathan, and their children to join us soon. The Orthodox community of Great Necks has grown expo exponentially over the decades. In 1975, there were two Orthodox shuls in the community. The Great Neck Synagogue, of course, and our tiny new young Israel of Great Neck. Now, I know of at least a dozen, but I'm certain that there are many more than that. But far more important to me than the number is the fact that there continues to remain tremendous actus. There is incredible unity. Unity of Ashkenazim and Sephardim who all get along. The rabbis of the various denominations of Judaism are also friendly and work together on different projects. For years, my dear friend Rabbi Meir Feldman of Temple Beth El of Great Nick, who was here with us, and is, I am so grateful to you, Meir, for being here. Where are you? Please stand up. We learned together with Havrusa on Tuesday mornings. Great Nick is a model of Shalom Bayes. Do we appreciate that enough? There is no machlokes in our community. Furthermore, so much spiritual growth has taken place in our shul and in the larger community of Great Neck. There are so many Bali Chuv in the community who have come back to Torah through the shuls and through Project Identity. And now we have the amazing nachos of seeing their children and their grandchildren, future generations of Jews who are completely committed to Torah and mitzvahs. But best of all, is that this spiritual growth in our community comes from one's own internal desire to grow in Torah and Kedusha and to feel closer to Hashem. There is absolutely no peer pressure. No one in Great Neck is looking over their shoulder and trying to live up to the standard of others. This means that Great Neck is a really healthy environment where there is true sincerity in Avodah Hashem. Furthermore, to the best of my recollection, there has never, mind you, there has never been machlokes, an argument about any halachic standards regarding communal issues. Not kashrus, the mikvah, the eruv, the accepted hashkochos. Rabbi Paolo Kapanai, a dear close friends who are constantly talking to each other and consulting on community issues. We are both totally on the same wavelength. 
We are always trying to cooperate in dealing with sensitive matters in the community. Rabbi Kalikov has been an extraordinary role model for me in so many different ways. Carrying himself with dignity, with strength, with humility, even under the most trying of circumstances. The joint, the joint Tikkun Leil Shavuos program that alternates between our two shuls dates back to 1994. Do you know why? Does anyone remember why? That was the time when the young Israel was under construction and we moved into the Great Neck Synagogue and were davening in the gym. And people said it would be ridiculous that we're going to have under one roof two separate Tikkun Leil Shavuos. And of course they were right. And so that year it was together and it has remained together forever since. There can be no greater testimony to that. If there is one day, one Yom Tov that talks and promotes the concept of Achtos, it's the Chag of Shavuos, where the Torah tells us that we came to Midbar Sinai by Yichan and we all, Belashon Yochid, not by Yachanu, but by Yichan Neged Haha. And the Chazal bring it in Rashi quotes from the Mechil to the Medrash Halacha. What does it mean by Yichan? Ki ish echad b'leib echad. That's what our community represents. We enjoy a tremendous closeness and unity within our community. I cannot fail to mention the wonderful relationship that Abby and I enjoyed with Rabbi Yathrayim and Rabbi Zin Elaine Wu, Zechron and Lebrocha. They were the true pioneers of the Orthodox community in Great Neck. They laid down the vital infrastructure through the growth of the Great Neck Synagogue and the founding of the North Jersey Brook Academy. There was nothing, absolutely nothing, that was beneath their dignity in striving to see that Torah take root and sprout and date Great Neck. This was in the early 1950s, mind you. The stories of how Rabbi Wolf himself drove the school bus of the North Shore Hebrew Academy to pick up the students in the earliest years and to bring them to the yeshiva is the ultimate sign of Abbas Hashem, Abbas HaTorah, and Abbas Yisrael. He was the embodiment of B'chol Lovavacha, B'chol Nafshecha, B'chol Miyavdecha. Everything that Great Mech has become today is because of their extraordinary dedication and their Mesiras Nefesh for Torah and Klai Yisrael. Yehizuch Ram Baruch. Abby and I are deeply honored by the presence of so many of our esteemed rabbinic colleagues and friends who have come together from near and far and from so many different decades of our lives. I want to single out one of my earliest and closest friends from the lowest grades of Salanta Yeshiva, the precursor to SAR in the Bronx, and that is Rabbi Tzvi Flam. We were together in Pelham Parkway, we were Chavrusas in the Kolel during Tzmicha years, and we remain Yedide Nefesh. Reb Tzvi, on behalf of myself and Abby, and I'm sure everyone here, we wish you and your Reb Tzvi Naomi a heartfelt Mazel Tov on your recent marriage. May you be blessed with long, healthy, happy, fulfilling years together. You know that Hakar Satov, the recognition and the expression of gratitude, is one of the most supreme values of our entire religion. We know this very clearly, because according to almost all Polskin, the only bracha, which is the Arisa, the only bracha which is a mandate and a commandment from the Torah, is Birchas Hamazon, to thank Kodesh Baruch Hu after having eaten a meal and walking away satiated. The founding families of our young Israel back in January 1974 deserve, now that my career is coming to an end, another expression of Hakar Satov. To the Kufels, the Lewintes, the Langs, the Liebes, the Katzes, and the, and the Hans. We would not be here today without their fortitude and their vision. Bill Kufel was our powerful president in the critical early years. He navigated the ship on a steady path, a path of warmth, a path of welcoming every single person, as we had heard, that stepped into the shul. And we continue in that tradition decades later. 
Morris in the winter enveloped our entire shul with his love, especially the incredible love that poured out of him for children. He and Louis Lang were our Bali tefillah for decades on the Yom and Orion. Frida Lewinter, we thank you from the bottom of our heart for being here and for representing all of our families. You know that because I was really alone, still single in the early years, Edith Lang and her family adopted me as the fifth son. She had a rule. I had to eat at the Lang home every Friday night. She forbade anyone among the members, of which there weren't so many, from <laughs> inviting me. A war would have broken out. But for lunch, for lunch, I was almost always at the home of Frida and Bill Kufel and David. And from eating lunch, I would go upstairs to their guest room. I would take my wonderful Shabbos nap. I would walk back with Bill to 558 Middle Neck Road, and I would give the Gemara Shia. I was going to mention the names of all of the 20 presidents that I have been privileged to work with side by side. No need to do that, thanks to you, Avi. It's not easy being a president. You are the address for all the complaints, ranging from, it's too hot in the shul, it's too cold, the dues are too high, there was too much talking. There was too much shushing to talk us. You can't win. We're Jews. We're the Ankh Sheoref. Even Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't immune to criticism. And so please, you're in a special group. Remember, guys, you're in the best of company. Feel proud of your service as in Evan Hashem. Remember that even Moshe Rabbeinu was constantly being criticized. And we have to pray that Hashem will greatly repay you and yours for being Oskim B'Tzorchei Tzibor Be'emunah. I want to give a very special shout out to all of the youth directors, past and present, so many of whom are here represented by coming to connect again with the young Israel that they served so admirably. And so thank you so, so much for your presence. You. you certainly helped tremendously to make our shul an exciting place a loving place for the next generation of our children, and as Abby pointed out, so many of them now are adult children who have chosen, thank God, to move back to Great Neck. I am very, very proud of our rabbinic staff. Rabbi Yismach and Malka are with us for 15 years already. After listening to his incredibly beautiful words, I don't have to tell you how outstanding he is, how dynamic he is, how multi-talented he is, how filled he is with idealism and creativity and passion. But beyond that, there is another part of him, a secret weapon. Who knew, who knew when we hired him at that point that we were getting the best Balt Fila around? What a steal, guys, brilliant move. Two for the price of one. Abby and I feel very confident that we are leaving the shul in the outstanding hands of a truly dedicated and idealistic couple that completely appreciates what makes the young Israel of Great Next so, so special. I want to highly commend Rabbi Eric Goldstein, who since his inception of the Dafyomi cycle in our shul back in 1988, more than 30 years ago, he has overseen it with incredible erudition, devotion, and has turned so many of our members into devotees of Dafyomi and literally made them into Tamide Chachamin. He also runs the Shul's Hashkamim Minion, the second daily minion for decades, and both are important components of our young Israel. Rabbi Simon Basilali is also a wonderful Tamid Chacham. The Shiurim on contemporary halacha on Shabbos mornings are filled with penetrating analyses and insights. His influence on the team minion, on the teens of our shul, is critical. They see him as a true model, role model, what a real Ben Torah is all about. He is sharp, he is sensitive, but he is filled with Torah wisdom and passion, an outstanding midos. I want to give a very, very special thanks to our two inimitable Gabayim, Aaron Waxpress and Charlie Goldberg. They have been serving the young Israel 
They have been serving me on Israel almost as long as I have. But guess what? Without pay, boy, did you get a steal. Day in, day out, Shabbos, Yom Tovim, on top of everything having to do with the davening, they have turned it into the most smooth running operation. You guys never miss a beat. There's one family in particular that certainly deserves to be singled out because of the incredible support that has so enabled us to climb higher and higher over the years in growing our beloved shul. I am referring, of course, to the Justin family. First, there was Zoltan and Kitty. They weren't even members of the shul. And they approached Louis Lang, saying that when the time comes for us to want to purchase a building, they will be there to help it happen. And that's truly what happened. They allowed us to purchase the building across the street and turn it into the magnificent Megdash Mahat it is today. They unfortunately have passed on, but you brought the Lachayim, their successes, their children, David and his beloved wife Trudy, continue this tradition. Two generations now have overseen our growth and our expansion at so many critical junctures. We would never have been able to flourish were it not for their incredible vis wisdom, vision and gen generosity. The solemn vow, the oath that Zoltan as a young man took along with his many relatives when they were fleeing from their shtetl in Hungary and they turned around and the grandfather pointed at the holy base Hecnesis, the shul that the Nazis Shalom, had set on fire. And he gave them a tzavah. If any one of us makes it out alive, I command you to rebuild the shul wherever you will end up. And that's what motivated Zoltan to come forth and allow our shul to get built. To what it's sadik. David continues this incredible legacy. I now want to express not just my gratitude, but my infinite gratitude to Shoshana Soho. Where are you, Shoshana? Shoshana. Don't be modest. Stand up. Come on. Stand up. I want to tell you, Shoshana, what it means to me, based on what you have contributed to YIGN, your incredibly gentle, modest, sensitive persona that is always there. You are the ultimate administrator, and you do it all in the most understated and modest way. You always have a smile on your face. You're always there for everyone and for every need that the shul has. Other shuls have large staffs in their office. You run this institution, which is now close to 400 families, single-handedly, and you keep it all together. But you do it with such humility, with sensitivity, with refinement, with care, respect, and compassion for all. You truly make the young Israel shine as the face of our shul. And as Abby and I know, you have made my life infinitely easier by being so incredibly organized on top of everything that needs to be taken care of in the young Israel. And now to my shrink, David Pelkovitz. Every rabbi needs a David Pelkovitz. I am the only one that was over to get David Pelkovitz. I have had lots of challenges things that way, way were above my abilities. One phone call to David Pelkovitz, and the problem is solved. I don't even begin to know how I am able to repay you and Lani for this kindness and for all the other kindnesses that you have extended to our family. And now, 
As I get close to the end, Acharon, Acharon, Chaviv, what can I say to our chairs of tonight's evening, Irv and Tara Golombek? What can Abby and I possibly say to the two of you to express our intense love and all the Akarat HaTov that we have for you? What you have done for us and our family for over 40 years. What about the rule of double jeopardy? Already been there, done that. You chaired the dinner for Yaakov and Abby Lerner at the 10th anniversary dinner. You were Yosef. You had no reason to take on a job that probably stopped you almost for an entire year from giving your all to your profession. You chaired the building committee when we built the magnificent new sanctuary. And we created an incredible Aron Kodesh by your connection to Middle Village. You have literally blown us and our kids away with your intense friendship and complete absolute love. You have merged your personal life with your communal life. Your 70th birthday party in Shul was not about you. It was a lesson to the tziba, to all of us, to understand the importance of communal service in a life that is well lived. The recent Torah dedication, this past fall, that included the entire kehila of young Israel, that marched through the streets of Kensington, Middle Neck Road, and then all invited for a sit-down meal, was another demonstration of your loyalty to family, to friends, and to the entire shul, and your unbelievably deep commitment to Judaism. Basically, I'm surmising that this past year, you might as well have closed down your practice earth. I know that most of the time you were busy planning and plotting all kinds of things behind mine and Abby's back, even giving up your house. Imagine, I don't know if everyone knows this, they surprised us when they flew in not only our daughters, which we were told they were going to do, but also all the grandchildren and all the sons-in-law. But where were they going to sleep? Urban Tara vacated their house, turned their house into a hotel, put all of our family except for one daughter in their home, and they moved out, never to be with their daughter and son-in-law. <laughs> I am so, so sorry for what they are doing to you. But we had nothing to do with it. I promise you, Nir, I promise you, Ellie, we had nothing to do with that plot. Even tonight, going into this unbelievable dinner, we didn't have a clue about how so much of what was going on. You were so devious <laughs> and oh so special. We don't have enough words to express our gratitude to both of you. You truly have been for us like a brother and a sister from nearly the very beginning of our shul. Hence, we cannot find the right words to express our depth of gratitude for all that you have meant to us and to our family. And I can tell you both that we love you from the bottom of our heart. Leaving Great Neck, it's truly very difficult for us because we love you so much, because we love the community so much, because we have been so, so happy and so fulfilled here over all of these unbelievable long years. Sure, we're very, very excited to make Aliyah, something we very much believe in ideologically. We're even more excited to be together with all of the children and all the many grandchildren which you have seen before you with our siblings, David and Esther, and David and Miriam, who all traveled in from Israel to be with their children, our nieces and our nephews, and especially to be living in Yushalayim, Yer HaKodesh. But at the same time, we know that we are going to miss Great Neck a great deal. We're going to miss all of our precious friends, and we know that the kind of warmth of this unique community of ours is almost impossible to find. We don't say this lightly. We've received permission to relay the following story. A few years ago, our dear friends, 
Mark and Ellen Newman lost their only child, their precious Ariel Yitzhak. Having come to observance a little later in life, someone approached them after their horrifying loss and asked the unthinkable, are you sorry now that you chose a life of observance? As if to say, Zu Torah, Zu Schara, this is Torah, and this is its reward? Ellen responded, without our faith and our commitment, we never would have become part of this community. And how could we have endured what we continue to endure without the unending love of our friends here? Ellen and Mark would continue to smile, continue to rejoice for the smachot of others and make them their own. You have been two of our most important teachers. Our faith and our values bring us to our community. And our community brings us to a greater faith in Hashem. David Kufelt you created the most beautiful and eloquent theme for tonight. But as beautiful and as moving as it is, we need to restate it more accurately. We, we have become who we are because of every single one of you. We very much look forward to coming back periodically to maintain this intense and precious relationship and we look forward to hosting you, Mi'ev Hashem in Eretz Yisrael. We thank you all so, so much for all that you mean to us, to our kids, and for all that you have done for us by creating for me and for Abby the most meaningful career that we could ever have imagined. We love you all.